Hi, I'm Marcus with the IndieMusicLab.com. So today you are going to learn the five step system for creating an incredible sounding psychedelic production. In this video, we're breaking down step by step my process for recreating the song Feels Like We Only Go Backwards by Tame Impala, which sounds like this. Literally all five steps that we're gonna talk about combine to create the sound that you just heard. So strap in, follow along in any doll that you like, maybe take some notes, grab a coffee, and let's get started. All right, step one in this five-step system for getting this psychedelic Tame Impala style song is you need punchy drums. So here is what my drums sound like. I'm gonna solo just the drums here in this session, and they sound like this. I just thought of something. I need to name this not only punchy drums, but punchy and loose drums. These drums are not quantized at 100%. I know how tempting that is, especially when you're first starting out with drum production. Maybe you're recording them in on a pad or even drawing them in. And one of the biggest mistakes producers make is we lock it in 100% quantize it to the grid. That is such a mistake and that is definitely not what is happening here. So we wanna create a punchy and loose drum sound. So now that you heard what the drums sound like, let's backtrack this a bit. So I started this drum sound with addictive drums and I just, filtered through some presets until I found a drum sound that sounded close to what I was looking for. And that is key when you're working with presets inside of different virtual instruments. Just look for something that is relatively close because then you can use plugins and you can use the performance to try to get the precise sound that you are looking for. But in this case, I landed on this preset. It's called Fudge Break inside of the United Pop Pack here in Addictive Drums. Now, you can hear some reverb there. So what I'm gonna do now is turn off all the plugins that are on these drums. So now, that is the bass level drum sound before it goes into any of the plugins. Now, one thing you'll see here, and I'll just mention it, I did bounce down all of the drum parts into audio tracks. I like to do that pretty early on and it just, it makes my workflow easier and I just prefer bouncing down the kick track and then the snare track and the hat track and all that down to the audio tracks. It's just the workflow that I prefer, but there's nothing wrong with maintaining the MIDI patterns throughout your entire drum production from start to finish. So once again, here is the pattern and this time this is without any of the plugins. Again, notice how loose it is, right? Where it's creating that groove, it's not quantized. All right, so let's just quickly, I'll run through step-by-step step what I did here on this drum bus. So all of these drum tracks, the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, I'm sending them through a bus, which you could just think of as a group. So all of them are being routed through this bus channel before they go to the main output. So then that means we can use plugins on that bus channel and it will affect all of the drum tracks, the individual drum tracks that go through it. So the first plugin is a compressor and an EQ. So here's without it. You hear a lot more beefiness in the kick drum. Most of that is coming from this massive boost of like 9 dB on this, e on this EQ. The kick drum just as it came out of addictive drums, there wasn't enough beefiness and meat in there. And so I just cranked it here at 60 Hertz on this EQ. And that's all I did with the EQ and just a bit of overall compression on the entire drum production here. Nothing crazy. We're doing only about two to three dB of gain reduction there. And then after that, I've got sausage fattener. This is like a saturation type plugin. And we are adding both fatness, which uh, which enhances the low end, as well as color, which enhances the high end. So you could think of this as low end saturation and high end saturation. So here is without sausage fattener. It's pretty subtle, but it does make a difference. You're starting to hear a bit more of a grainy almost type of sound, it's just adding that bit, that hint 
of saturation to this. And then the next plugin is if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that you were gonna see RC20 at some point in this chain. And here is without RC20. So RC20 is one of my favorite plugins in the world. I use it on basically every song. And I started with the Vinyl 3 preset here, and then I made slight adjustments from there. I think I turned down the noise slightly so it's not quite as intense. I turned down the magnitude a bit just to make it fit so that it wasn't too obvious of an effect for this drum bus. Now, one thing I will mention, I know that I'm using a lot of different plugins here. However, I don't actually use that many plugins relatively speaking to perhaps what maybe some other people use or what you think you should use. So if you want just a basic PDF, a basic list of the 12 plugins that I use on every song, I literally have a PDF that I made to help you, you know, eliminate the overwhelm of all the plugins that are out there. And this list gives you 12 plugins I use on virtually every song. So I will leave a link in the description below if you want to check that out. Okay, so the next plugin. Now, before I move on to the next plugin, I did realize that there is something going on with the symbols, right? You hear that Tame Impala flare with the phasey symbols and right, that type of sound. And that is because I'm actually routing the cymbal tracks through this cymbals bus before they go through the drum bus. So they are also going through this drum channel here, but first I'm sending all the cymbal tracks through this cymbals bus where I have a phaser. And so here is without those three plugins. It's just a normal sounding symbol, but here, right? And so what we have here, now these top three plugins are turned off and that is because I experimented, I tried a couple different plugins and I ended up turning off the ones that didn't quite achieve the sound I wanted to. So let me just delete those, but I'm glad I left those in because just so you can kind of get a, a feel for what this looks like. The first couple plugins you try to get a particular type of sound might not actually work. So we have a phaser here, mix it like halfway. And then what we also have is I'm running these cymbals through a bit of delay. And it sounds like this if I crank it. So that's the effect and that is definitely just me experimenting. I open up Valhalla Delay and I browse through and naturally I was like, oh, the phasers, oh, that might give us something cool for this particular type of sound. Landed on a preset, sounded great, and then just made adjustments from there to really lock in these cymbals to give me that very phasey type of sound. And then finally, I just wanted to make that cymbal effect and the phaser and everything we've added, I just wanted to narrow the sound a bit so it's not as stereo. And that's why I'm using this binaural pen plugin in Studio One. I just needed a plugin that I could make the sound a bit more mono. Because here, if it's, if it's very stereo, it's like that. Versus if it's more mono. And I just preferred in this case to have that sound be slightly more narrow. Okay, so those are the cymbals and those are also running through the drums bus. So now let's, continue on in this chain of the drums bus, which I'll quickly run through these because these these last couple are really just me experimenting. I experimented with the Valhalla space modulator here. This is like a doubler slap delay type of effect. There's without it. It's a very subtle effect, nothing crazy going on here but I'm just, I was in that experimentative mode and that is, I thought that added just a nice little hint of coolness to the sound. And then finally we have Valhalla Delay here, another phaser preset here on the drum bus. Just without it. So do you hear that? What's happening there is we are running Every drum track, including those cymbals that already have a phaser on it, we're running all of them through this drums bus and we're phasing it out even more with another phaser preset here inside of this delay plugin. Mix is only at 16%, but that little bit really does make a difference. And so finally, I'll just 
bring this in here real quick. Just a quick EQ just to cut away a tiny bit around 2K. I just thought it was cutting through a little bit too much up there. So it's a very subtle move there. And then finally, I'm sending this entire drums bus to some reverb. Sounds like this. All right, so that's a huge reverb. It is what I ended up calling the tape reverb, which interestingly enough is also Valhalla delay, but I use the tape lush vocal reverb setting inside of this delay. A lot of delays, you can actually achieve a very reverbic sound that can give you almost cooler sounds than a typical reverb plugin would. And in this case, that was true. And so Valhalla delay, I used a preset and it gave me that really cool sound. And I also use this tape reverb for the vocals and some other tracks in this session as well, which is why I have it on a return track. So look it up online if you don't know what a return track is. It's where you are setting up an effect on a different channel and then you are sending a copy of like your vocal using a send or drums in this case, sending it through that reverb or delay or whatever else you might wanna use in that type of case. So. That is what we have when it comes to the drum production. It's nice and punchy, but notice how it's nothing crazy. We're starting from a good place from the Addictive Drums preset. It already has some compression coming from the plugin itself. So I started with a good drum sound that I liked, that I thought was close to the final result. And then we just ran it through some, some compression, some saturation, RC20 to give it some retro sounds and effect, some vinyl, and then some phaser type qualities and a little bit of EQ at the end and some reverb that we're sending it to here. So punchy drums, make them loose as well. Don't quantize them too much. And then here is what the end result can sound like on your drum production. And one more thing I forgot to mention is these drums are all panned slightly to the right. That is what I heard on the original song from Tame Impala is those drums are not panned down the middle. So I took the entire drum bus, everything going through the drum bus, and I panned it 32 right, as you can see here. So that, especially when we talk about the bass next, you'll see how that offsets and creates just an interesting yet subtle effect on the overall sound of this production. So a little bit of panning on the drums as well. So now let's move on to the next step. All right, step two in the five step system is you need a saturated baseline. So this is pretty straightforward. So we're not gonna spend a bunch of time on it. So here is what it sounds like and then we'll strip it back and I'll show you exactly what I did to get this sound. Love that, it's grimy, distorted, and it just cuts through the mix so well. So now let me turn off all the plugins on this bass track and here's what it sounds like, just DI recorded in. Pretty lame, right? Just a basic, that's a DI straight from my Fender standard jazz bass recorded in through my Apollo Twin interface into my DAW and that is the basic sound. Now, one by one, I'll quickly run through these plugins. This is the GTR amp from Waves and I basically use the bass settings for this. Sounds like this. Now, notice that it's still sounding pretty clean, pretty basic, nothing crazy going on. And then next, I did a bit of EQ. I needed just more, more bigness in the low end as well as the high range. So I just did this type of EQ move. I thought that's what I needed to hear and then we have the fat channel here inside of Studio One, which is my go-to for if I wanna add compression and EQ, especially if I want a bit of a vintage flair with analog model compressors and EQs. And so we have a bit of tube compression here, but it's very, very subtle. Just a little kiss of compression there. And then, As you can see here, also we have a 6 dB boost on this bass down here around 100 hertz, but close to 3 dB boost in the mid range, another boost here, another boost on the very top end. I'm just messing around with this bass guitar sound to try to get it to fit in the mix well. 
And then finally, this is the most important part, which is the saturation portion of this. So the first saturation plugin on this bass is Sausage Fatter. It sounds like this. Just without it. Now that is adding a bit of more of the high end saturation. That one's pretty subtle, but now listen to what it sounds like when we add saturation knob, which is the majority of this saturated sound. Yeah. <laughs> There's without it. That's what our ears want to hear, right? That's what we need. And that is the most important effect in this entire chain. And then just a tiny bit of EQ at the end to just to kind of make it fit even better in the mix. So there you go. That is my process for getting this bass guitar effect. Now, one more thing I'll mention here, notice the pan is 64 left. So I'm panning this to the left, which works really well because we're panning all of the drums to the right, as I just mentioned before. So if we put the drums and the bass together, it sounds like this. All right, step number three is incredibly fun and it is lose yourself in the keys. So what I mean by that is for this type of psychedelic pop rock song in the style of Tame Impala, you really can just have fun. It almost doesn't matter. You can throw a bunch of different layers of keys and synths and weird sounds, use whatever software you have available and just browse through a bunch of presets or sounds and put some effects on there and just watch the magic start to build. It's amazing what can happen when you just experiment a little bit. Now, there is still a hierarchy here, so let me show you what the most important keys tracks are, and then we'll start to work from the top down, and you'll get to see the more subtle tracks that we added here. So all the keys tracks here are these in green. So this is the main track that you hear that is the loudest. Right? playing very basic chords, just buh, 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 you know, nothing crazy happening at all. And this is an Omnisphere patch. Now, remember what I just said, use whatever software you have. Now, I'm a huge fan of Omnisphere. Buying Omnisphere was one of the best investments I ever made in myself as a producer. However, use whatever software you have. And trust me, you probably have more interesting sounds and presets than you think you do. So do some exploring, use what you have, and I think you'll be surprised at what you'll find. So this, this was completely me just browsing around. I ended up with busted paraphonic cello sound. And then when I played these on the keys, it just gave me an interesting keyboard type of effect, like a synthy sound, right? And that helps drive the chord progression of the song. Now, as far as the effects go, I did add a little bit. So here's without that effect. Notice how that sounds a little bit more straightforward, a bit less flangy or phasey, but then when I add this plugin, it kind of swims around a bit. And that is because of Valhalla Space Modulator. This is a free plugin, by the way. And anytime you're going for this type of very psychedelic, swimming around, phasey sort of sound, this is a great plugin to experiment with. And so I threw this on there and it just helped that sound to be just a bit less clean, which is what I wanted. Now, as you can see here as well, the flanger is what I originally tried, didn't quite give me the sound I wanted, so I turned it off. So I'll go ahead and remove that, and I'm just using the Valhalla Space Modulator on this track. And then one more thing you'll notice here is I'm panning this keys track to the right, 75 right, and that really helps offset that bass guitar, which is panned to the left, right? So we've got the drums panned to, or am I think, am I remembering it wrong? Yeah, yeah, the drums are panned to the right, the bass guitar is panned to the left. So what this basic or this main keys track is doing is it is offsetting the bass guitar and the keys. So you have the bass guitar panned to the left, the keys panned to the right. And so far now we've got the drums, the bass guitar and the keys. And it sounds like this. So 
So again, that's the main keys track that is driving the chord progression of the song. Now, from here on out, I just had fun. I threw random sounds, random presets. I just experimented. And here are the types of tracks I ended up with. So we have this one. And that's just one note. I just fading in and out. I'm not even playing the chords. It's just on that one chord or the one note, really. And that just fades in and out. Combine that with the keys. A really cool texture, right? That was just another sound I found, I think, in Omnisphere. I ended up bouncing it down to audio here to save on CPU space. But just a very basic, I guess not basic sound, but I just stumbled across it. And I was like, oh, this could sound cool as a little texture piece. So I threw it in there. And then the next track we have here is like a synth sound. Speaking of not following the chord progression, notice how the main keys track is following the chord progression. But this synth layer is just on the one chord, just playing the same thing over and over and over. And it layers in really nicely with that main keys track. And um, this was, again, just a patch. I actually got this from the analog lab library that I have and I bounced it to audio as well, but it's just on the one chord over and over and over again from start to finish, and it just blends in really nicely. And then we have a reverse piano sound that I found in Omnisphere. And then finally, a little fluttery track that sounds like this. It sounds a lot like this airy track, right? They both have that texture, but this flutter track actually does follow the chord progression more. But even in all of this, there's a lot of randomness to it. It's not like a set formula. I just knew that I needed to start with a bass level keys track, which is what we have at the top here. And then from there, I just experimented, played around with some sounds that end. Whenever it sounded cool, whenever my ear said, yes, that sounds cool, I found a way to blend it into this entire keys production. And then obviously the entire production of the song at large. And then finally, I'm gonna add these two tracks here, the Psych Guitar 1 and Psych Guitar 2. The reason I'm bringing this in here is even though these are electric guitar tracks, they just fit right in with the keys because they are so destroyed. <laughs> the, the sound, listen. So one on the left, one on the right. I'm just playing very basic melody lines up there with my electric guitar, and then I'm running it through the GTR tool rack from Waves, and I browsed through their most crazy presets until I found one that just gave me this stupid psychedelic sound. And then the left one is a bit more of that chorusy sound, and, and I even did add a chorus plugin on top or after the GTR tool rack to make it even more chorusy in nature. And then the guitar on the right was also very phasey, but also super distorted. And so they're, they are different effects, but they blend together so well. I have one pan hard left, the other pan hard right. And then again, when you have them together, it's just, it really helps elevate this song. So now here is up to this point, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Here is all the tracks, the drums, the bass, and the keys, as well as these little psych guitars blended in as well. All right, step number four in this five-step system for a psychedelic song is you want to make the vocals sound great and then ruin them. Now, I'm not gonna get too much into the vocals because I already made a specific video on these exact vocals to get a psychedelic vocal mix. And so I'll leave a link in the description below for that video, that was last week's video. So be sure to check that out if you wanna really dive deeper into everything that I did on this vocal. However, I'm gonna give you an overview of what we did. So what I mean by make the vocal sound great and then ruin it is you need to make sure that it does sound great 
from the perspective of the vocal take, the EQ, the compression, and the saturation. Lock those in. Get good at those skills. And that's what I teach you all over my channel and on my website, with my courses, with my free guides, with my videos here on YouTube. Everything is here to give you these skills. And so get good at EQ, get good at compression, get good at saturation. Because once you do that and you have a good baseline, a good foundation, it's incredible how easy it becomes to make your reverbs and your delays, which is important for this genre. It's amazing how easy it is to get those to sound awesome if you get the foundation right. Okay, so now what I'm gonna show you is when it comes to getting a psychedelic vocal mix, my preferred method is to not try and get it with just one reverb or one delay. That can be difficult to get the fullness that you're trying to achieve. So generally speaking, it's a better idea to hit that vocal from multiple angles. So in this case, I'm hitting it from three angles when it comes to the reverb, and the delay. And those three angles are number one, the flange reverb, number two, the spacious reverb, and number three is the slap delay with modulation. So these are three different sounds like reverb effects that are set up on return tracks. Again, I'm using return tracks and I'm sending different tracks in my session through that effect, okay? So we have the flange verb here, we have the tape reverb here, which is what I call the spacious verb. So let me move this over here actually. So this is one, two, and then the slap back delay with modulation. So the first reverb sounds like this. This is the flange verb. So let's go one by one. Let's come back to this lead vocal and we'll turn all of these sends off and we'll start with the flange reverb and it sounds like this. So that is a reverb with a flanger on the reverb. That is the basis of this sound. Again, if you wanna dive deeper into everything that I did on this vocal mix, be sure to check out last week's video on the psychedelic vocal mix. Now the second reverb in this three part series of reverb or delay sounds is the spacious reverb and that soloed sounds like this. But I hear it inside my head that really adds some space to it. And I ended up using a delay plugin for this actually. And I stumbled across this lush vocal reverb preset here inside Valhalla Delay. And because of this diffusion setting here inside of the plugin, this is basically just a reverb. So it completely drenches that reverb or that delay in the reverb effect inside of this plugin. And it just sounds fantastic. And then also use a bit of pancake to swim the sound around. But again, let's zoom out a bit. We've got the flange reverb as our first way of hitting the vocal with a reverb sound. The second layer is this tape reverb or spacious reverb that is adding a really nice stereo spread, very airy type of reverb. And then thirdly is probably the most important reverb and or delay in this entire series, and that is the slapback delay reverb. So that sounds like this. Listen to this. That is such an important effect in this song, okay? So if we combine the three and we go flange verb, the tape reverb, and the slapback delay, this is the sound that we get. So that's step number four, make the vocals sound great and then completely ruin them with reverbs and delays and all that jazz. Now finally, step number five is you need to add some ear candy to spice up this production, okay? So I'm just gonna walk you through very quickly a little bit of the ear candy moves I made. So this was one of them. All right, this little part where and you can hear this effect in the original song by Tame Impala, right? Where you've got, this was originally up here. This is the same tape. That's originally what it sounded like. But what I did is I created a new vocal track. I pulled down just that little phrase of the vocal. That way we can get a bit of differentiation between the 
normal vocal and then the the ear candy grab it like grabs your ear and pulls you into this different sound for a word or two with this different effect on that part of the vocal so for starters it's pan to the left we got like 59 left so that in of itself pulls your ear and it grabs your attention from the vocal being more down the middle to just that little part being more on the left right because you have So, but not just that, I also affected it differently. So we've got a bit of tuning. We've got uh, a bit of saturation. In this case, I just use Ozone 9, but you can use any saturation that you have in your DAW. This is a bit of tube saturation, and that adds that distorted quality. I've got JJP vocals to give that part a bit of extra compression and bite. And then finally, just a bit of EQ at the end to make it fit within the context of everything else so that the transition sounded pleasant to me. So here is without those effects and without the sends with the reverb as well. Right, just super dry, nothing much happening. But then when we turn on those effects, especially that distortion, it really differentiates itself from the main vocal track and it creates a really nice bit of ear candy. Okay, and then that also happens on this exact same track, the exact same process over here. It's such a great move and it just keeps the song interesting. That is the point of ear candy. So that's one example. And then we've got the background vocals that are incredibly sparse. Now, one more time again, I talked more in depth about everything that, that's happening with the vocal production on this. And I will leave a link in the description for that. But notice how sparse it is. They're, the background vocals aren't there the whole time, which makes them more impactful when you do actually hear them. So listen to this. Right? We're just layering in some doubles there in the harmony, one pan left, one pan right. A bit of harmony there harmony there this one was on the left this one was on the right it keeps moving it's it's not completely like predictable there is a rant a, a feeling of randomness to it and it's just this is the power of ear candy it's not just the lead vocal on its own it's not even just the lead vocal and everything else we've talked about on its own ear candy is such an important part of the process you want to Take some time before the end of your production to just mess around and have fun. Most of what you try is not going to work, but the two or three things that do work, it is incredible the profound impact that those two or three little pieces of ear candy can have on your production. Okay, so that is what we have here with these background vocals, adding that ear candy, as well as with the lead vocal effects. And then just a couple more ear candy things inside of this track is we have a delay throw, right? We've got this. On that my name, just that little delay throw. And I have that set up on a return track. I have that delay here on this throw return track. It's just Valhalla delay and with some reverb on there. And we're sending this lead vocal Undersends to that delay throw, but it is only turned on for those two words, my name, and it's turned off everywhere else. And this is the automation lane for that. It's whenever the line's up here, it's turned off. Whenever the line's down here, which only happens here, it's turned on. And then we also have a quarter note delay that kind of sits back farther than the reverbs and the slap delay I showed you earlier, but it sounds like this. It's not as audible, it's more subtle, but it does help add another layer of space, a bit more of an ear candy component to it. And finally, one more thing, and this is almost reverse ear candy. And what I mean by that is it is adding ear candy by subtracting an effect. What I mean by that is this flange verb, remember that I said it was the flange verb, the spacious reverb, and the slap delay was 
were like the big three angles at which we were throwing reverb at the vocal. Well, the flange reverb, I actually turned it off during the verse so that the difference between here. When I realize I'm just holding on to so for that part, there's only two of the three reverbs active. It's the slap delay with modulation and the spacious reverb or the tape reverb. This flange reverb is turned off on that vocal for the verse. Because see here, I have an automated. See here, it's turned off. It's subtle, isn't it? But you do notice the lift. We went from two of the three being active in the verse to three of the three by bringing that flange verb back for the chorus. So that is just a beautiful aspect of return tracks and putting your effects on a different channel than say your vocal and your drums and everything else because it allows you to do these types of things where I created like a big three with two reverbs and like a slap delay but then you can automate at different parts of the song to have all of them active or only one or only two or maybe none or all three and it allows you to create so much more interest in your song from the start all the way to the end. So that is my five-step system for creating a psychedelic song in the style of Tame Impala. Now, if you wanna dive deeper into plugins specifically, I know that can be an overwhelming topic, but I wanna simplify it for you. I've got a free guide. It's the 12 plugins I use on every song. So if you just want some basic clarity for, these are the plugins that you should perhaps pay attention to. If you like my channel, then I think you'll really enjoy this because this gives you the 12 plugins I use on every song. So I'll leave a link in the description below for that if you wanna check it out. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it helpful. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and play this song from start to finish. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. If it